Hey, hey, good morning, guys. What is going on? Happy Sunday morning, wherever you are. I uh, hope you're having a great start to the day so far. Brent Abel here, webtennis.com. Another episode of seven around seven, uh, seven ten this morning out here in the West Coast, Pacific time zone, the California desert, Rancho Mirage, Mission Hills Country Club, Wimbledon Drive, 92270. Um, guys, uh, I'm actually heading over to play some clay court doubles this morning over at El Dorado uh, Country Club here in the desert, nine o'clock. Got some um, tough hombres I got to deal with this morning. Anyway, looking forward to that. I uh, hope you've got some good tennis scheduled for today. Hey, guys, today what we're going to work on a single strategy that um, has actually <laughs> saved my <laughs> saved my butt several times in matches when um, I just kind of discovered either didn't have my A game on that particular day, or the guy was just eating up my A game, even though my A game was working, or I was playing someone who was better. And, you know, I just, just like I said before, I mean, kind of that, that second thing is your A game is, is just not getting the job done because maybe you're executing it, but but the guy or the gal over there is just going, well, thank you very much. So look, before we get into this three shot evil strategy, that I'm going to show you um, uh, guys, a couple things. Number one, uh, if you love seven around seven and webtennis.com, one way that you can support what's going on here every morning uh, is uh, down below in the description area. There is a link that will take you to web tennis gear, G E A R.com. And um, what you can do is pick up a T-shirt or two or more over there. And um, different sizes, obviously, different styles, different colors. But it's the Web Tennis on YouTube, kind of our little logo uh, for 7 Around 7. And, uh, yeah, just, just pick up a T-shirt. And when you do, what I'm going to do is give you one of my uh, $97 Stroke Technique courses. There's seven. You can choose from either from, from any of those seven. Uh, your choice and um, my way of saying thanks for your support and, and uh, it's on me. I'll give you that as a gift uh, when you pick up uh, one or more t-shirts over at webtennisgear.com. That link is down below in the description area. Guys, your thing is if you love what we're doing here, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the uh, subscribe button so you get notified every time uh, I go live or upload new content to the YouTube channel. Uh, that would be greatly appreciated. It really helps me get a bigger reach out to those tennis players on YouTube as well as Facebook. Um, so, guys, let me uh, let me change this to a little bit different screen. And uh, and then I'm going to show you this kind of nasty little three shot strategy um, deal. So here we go. Now, again, this is when I, I, I use this, you know, if, if just things aren't working out and it's not that I actually have to go and use this for a complete change for the rest of the match. Sometimes it's just enough for me to be able to um, maybe it only takes 10, 12, 15, maybe 20 minutes, maybe half a set, maybe a set. Who knows? Um, until things kind of settle down. And, and that's generally because I'm, I'm just sort of not executing whatever my, you know, whatever the plan of the day was. Um, but what I want you to do here is I want you to think about three shots. Number one is the yellow. And the yellow is going to be either this straight line here or this curved line here. And for me, I'm going into uh, typically into the guy's backhand. Right. Not because it's weaker, but just because for whatever reason, I tend to get uh, if I if I execute the shot I want, then I tend to get um, the second shot, which is going to be this uh, this this orange line here. Uh, and I'm going to go through each one of these um, because the third shot then is going to be uh, the red line. So the first two. Right. The yellow shot is going to be the straight line is either for me. It's a slice backhand drive into, it doesn't have to be deep, doesn't have to be near the sideline. It's just an in play. I want, it to, I want it to land. I want it to be a high quality slice backhand. 
that skids and stays low, right? I don't want to get it into that guy's strike zone over there. So I want this thing to stay a little bit low, right? Um, or if I get a forehand, I'm going to play kind of a high topper looper, semi topper. It's not a lob. It's got some top because I want it to bounce up, right? So the first, the choice on the first shot is one of two shots. For me, it's that slice backhand that stays low down below their strike zone. Or if I get a backhand, I mean, excuse me, if I get a forehand, I'm going to loop it. And I'm going to loop it so that it's got a little bit of top, doesn't have to be massive top. For me, maybe just like you, if I get too much top spin, the ball lands short. It's just not, it's not landing where I want it. And you don't need a ton of top um, if you've got the right trajectory, which is a semi lob, right? Um, again, it's not a flat lob. It's just a, it's just a, uh, it's just a topper in there that's got some bounce, right? And that if you land it too deep, it might work against you where the better player is going to step forward, pick it up right off the bounce and be able to drive it. But if you make it land around the middle of the of this quadrant, their 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 backhand side quadrant, which you know for me is usually a right-handed player to their backhand, it's going to get up on them, right? Now, assuming that the next ball they give me is going to not be a tough ball, right? But where I can make it look like I'm either going to play that slice backhand again or I'm going to play the same top or forehand again from the same setup position on either one of those two shots, backhand or forehand, I'm going to play a little dropper. And I'm not going to think that the dropper has to be perfect. All I'm going to think about is I want this guy to have to move in and play the shot. And typically what's going to happen is they're going to get to it. I almost want, I want them. I don't want to hit such a great shot I mean, obviously, I'll take it if it's such a great shot that there's no way that they even move off the baseline. I'd like them to burn a little fuel, right? And so at least make an attempt to get to it. But assuming that they get to it, then whatever they give me, wherever it is, this third shot, the red line, is going to be a lob over their backhand side. And this is all assuming that you're playing a right-handed player. The R over there doesn't actually signify right hand. It signifies returner as opposed to the S, which is server. Anyway, hope that's not confusing. Um, I do this strategy a lot, especially against someone who's better than I am. I used to make the mistake where I would try to drive through this player. I would try to go from corner to corner and not allow the better player to be able to touch the ball. And you know, the end result was a lot of unforced errors, a lot of frustration. And sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes the better player has got only a set amount of fuel in the fuel tank. And what you can do is you can start to burn fuel. You might lose the first set. You might go down a break in the second. But at some point, that better player over there, unless they're super fit, you know, another reason why I'm always working on you guys, you know, don't let fitness be the reason that you lose a match, um, especially against someone who you ought to be beating nine and a half out of 10 times, right? Don't let fitness be the reason that you go down. So, but, but even against that fit player, if you execute this strategy over and over and over again, um, you're going to drain some, some fuel out of the tank and you never know. So just quick recap. This is a three shot strategy. Doesn't mean doesn't mean the point ends on on three shots. It might end up on this four on this third ball where you lob over their backhand as they're up at net. Don't go for the pass. You know, unless the guys run up for your <clears throat> for your drop shot and fallen over <clears throat> and the racket is, you know, somewhere over here, well then obviously you could kind of just just bunt the ball over here. But if you don't have, <clears throat> excuse me, if you don't have a wide open, clear uh, opening <clears throat> for that third shot, lob it because you want them to have to deal with that high backhand volley. It doesn't have to be a perfect lob. It doesn't have to be a winner, right? <clears throat> if you, if they have to go back and play that high backhand volley, gosh darn it, you could start to move in 
and then look for a wide opening for maybe a fourth shot. <clears throat> Pardon me. So that's it, right? First shot's the yellow line. For me, it's with the slice backhand, high quality slice. It skids, it stays low, it's down below their strike zone. If I get a forehand, I loop it with some top so it bounces up. It gets up above their strike zone. Why are we doing this, right? Because we're looking for them to give us, doesn't have to be super short, doesn't have to even, even be an approach shot that short. But it's got to be something where you can move inside the baseline for the second ball. And either it's going to look like another slice backhand. It's going to look like another roll forehand up high. And from either one of those two setup positions, you learn how. You, you figure it out. Well, how are you going to make it look like another one of those two shots is coming? And then you play the dropper. And I always play the dropper to the forehand. Uh, because I want it easier to be able to lob over to their backhand side, right, on that on that third shot. So there you have it. Look, um, again, like anything else in the game of tennis, um, this is not a tip. This is not a quick fix, right? This is something you actually have to work on. Well, what are the shots that you need in, in this thing? Well, number one, you either got to be able to hit a slice, high quality slice back in, or you got to be able to hit a, a semi top, I mean, semi topper mid, mid lob, right? I'm not talking about a full blown high lob. I'm talking about a, you know, nice high over the net uh, forehand. So you got to be able to have one of those two shots, right? Dropper, you've got to be able to learn how to play a dropper from the same setup of one of those two shots that we just talked about, right? And it can't, you you just, I mean, the quality of the drop shot, everyone says, oh, you got to hit this kind of spin. That is such baloney. You can bunt drop shots all day long, as long as you've got great disguise. And the whole drop shot, the whole technique on drop shot is disguise. If your setup looks different than what you just did with either a slice backhand or maybe a, a forehand, and you might get away with one, but from there on out, every time that opponent sees this slightly different setup that is your drop shot setup, doesn't work. Uh, it, I mean, they just they 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 just take off, right? And and so and then the other shot is look, just be able to hit. And I don't go for the top spin lob for that third shot, just because I don't need to. And it's just it's, it's such a technical shot, just. Bunt the thing over to, over their backhand. The whole thing is you want to get it over their backhand side. If it's short, that's okay. You're forcing them to have to hit a high backhand volley, a high backhand overhead, possibly the two toughest shots in the game, right? And then just kind of take it from there. And is this a guarantee you're going to win a point every time you do this? No, but that's okay because you are going to be draining the fuel out of that out of that gas tank over there. Even if you lose the point, that's okay. That's okay. So look, um, yeah, this is not a tip. This may be, this is a strategy. You, you sort of intellectualize it initially. All right, well, this makes sense. Then you go out and, and you work on it and you find a practice partner, right? And you guys work on it and you start to get the feel for it. Um, is it going to be an overnight deal? No, <laughs> but um if you put in the time, and I know there's going to be a small percentage of players that will actually organize the time, number one, which is going to be to find a practice partner. Um, maybe you got a ball machine that'll, you know, give you, I, I guess, sort of different balls to be able to do this on. That's fine. Um, but whatever, you got to you got to get serious about this, because if your strategy against someone where or you're 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 playing someone at your level or maybe a little bit less and your a plan's not working that day and you try to force more a plus a plus a plus into it not working what are you going to do or you're playing a better player you're playing someone who's probably going to beat you nine and a half out of ten times what are you going to do are you going to try to force that guy by bigger and bigger and more power Go for it, but it's not going to work. I guarantee it's not going to work. At least in my experience, it never worked. Uh, I might have won a few points that way, but you know, I might have felt great about hit, you know, dinging a winner. But the reality is, when the when the match is over, you haven't won it. So 
This is a strategy, a three shot strategy that will probably set you up for a fourth shot. And a lot of great stuff happens. First of all, I mentioned those shots that you just that you got to have. There's there's a couple of shots in there that you got to get good at, right? So you got to work on those as well. But the other the other mindset that this gives you is it gives you confidence that hey, I've got a shot pattern strategy here that I can execute, right? I've got a way to to drain the fuel tank over there. And the other mindset here is that you're start to get more and more comfortable staying in the point, right? Most players, let's be honest, three, five, four, oh, even some four, five guys, they don't feel comfortable staying in the point. They feel like, you know, the longer I stay in the point, the chances go up that something bad's going to happen. And I, I would say for me with my game over the last 10 years that I'm winning way, way more points by letting that guy touch the ball and feeling comfortable about it, right? And whether that means that I've got an opening and I don't go for just, you know, six inches inside the line, I go for two feet, three feet inside the line, I let them touch it, and the next ball that comes back is is, is a wide open fat sitter that all I got to do is bunt the thing in there. I don't have to risk anything, right? So that's a big mindset right there. That's a big mindset skill is – can you stay in the point and be comfortable? And if you can do that, man, you can do a lot of damage out there to lots of different types of players and even players that are better than you um, at this point. And what you're going to find is that you're going to start to close that gap between, between the players that are better than you right now and, and not thinking, well, the way I have to do that is I got to get the ball machine. I got to get a practice partner and I got to learn how to really grip and rip forehands. I got to really learn how to grip and rip backhands. I got to get a big monster serve. That's not the way that you're going to close the gap between those better players, right? We talked about yesterday. You got to win through ho-hum, big deal. You know, you got to be able to play shots that are well inside the court and do it over and over and over again. I'm not talking about pushing. I'm talking about, especially with a strategy, right? We're, we're talking about quality, quality shot making, right? We're not talking about, we're, you know, we're not talking about a slice backhand that goes over there and sits up short. No, man, we're, we're talking about trying to get the ball down below their, their comfort strike zone, right? That's a, that's a slice backhand drive, right? Um, where it actually, it, it moves through the bounce. It stays low, um, we're talking about a forehand, a, 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 a semi-topper, not a massive windshield wiper baloney forehand that you know as well as I do is going to end up short most of the time or it's going to be shanked, right? The ball's going to roll around the frame a few times before it gets out of there. No, we're, 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 we're talking about a high height over the net that's going to land right around the middle of that quadrant, their backhand, and, and bounce up, Right. And you're going to be super accurate with it. And then we're talking about the disguise on the on the dropper. Can you, from the same look, absolutely sell the same shot that 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 you just hit? And then and then pull the trigger on the dropper and know that you don't care if he gets to it or not. In fact, you want them to get to it. You want them to play it back to you. You want to be able to lob over their back end, and you just want to go, you know, evil. Evil strategy. All right, guys, that's it for me today. Um, look, if you love today's seven around seven, uh, or if you love the whole thing, just go ahead. Please hit the like, hit the subscribe. Uh, just hit any button you can find over there, right? Just, just kind of tee it up. Um, and if you want to take the next step, down below, webtennisgear.com. It's in the description area. Uh, pick up a YouTube, pick up a web tennis on YouTube t-shirt. Men's, women's, different styles, different colors, sizes, beautiful thing. And I'm going to give you one of my $97 uh, stroke technique courses. You get to choose one um, of those seven courses. Guys, the other thing is please leave a comment today. Leave a comment or a question. Um, first of all, I love to read and respond. But, but another thing, too, is it does help me with YouTube 
uh, and Facebook as well in terms of reaching out to more tennis players. Guys, that's it for me today. It is time for all of us to get out there today. Help someone else have a spectacular day. Guys, I'll see you again next time.